everybody, both Game Boys and Girls, to this chromatographic that's about to unfurl. My name's Matt, the Game Boy, and this is the show where I talk about video games, the highs and the lows. This week, something different, a bit of a treat. So please listen closely and pull up a seat. It's a game from Konami, and it's based on a book called The Grinch That Stole Christmas. Let's give it a look. There's not many traditions that I have at Christmas. I'll perhaps stuff my face and then grow somewhat listless. And all of those movies they play on the telly, like Die Hard and Gremlins and Don't Forget Frosty. But there's two festive movies I rather enjoy that I'll sit down and watch as I play with my toys. And wouldn't you know it, they're both the same story. One's made in the 60s, the other the noughties. They're based on a book wrote by one Dr. Zeus about a miserly green thing, a social recluse, who plans to steal Christmas from all of the Who's, but ends up its saviour and slightly amused. For you see, his heart grew three sizes that day, and he carves the roast beast as the foo flompers play. I'm told that it's loved by kids of all ages, and it's written in verse, just like our video today is. But then again, all those words, words, words. If there's one thing we hate, it's all those words, words, words. So we just watch the movie while we feast, feast, feast. Because that's a lot easier while we all eat our sweets. But the Chuck Jones animation is on our topic today. So I'll put my best Boris Karloff impression away and instead point your attention to the live-action version. It stars one Jim Carrey, and it's a worthy conversion. And while there's a new one, please spare me the sermon. It's not yet on Netflix, so I've not seen it in person. And besides, that's not the source of our game's inspiration. So let it be struck from the record, the whole conversation. But the one with Jim Carrey? That was quite the hit. So Konami picked up the license, and they picked it up quick. They then tasked the game to Konami Entertainment Nagoya to make a GBC game that the critics would enjoy. Not based on the versions by Artificial Mind and Movement. In fact, I would argue this game's an improvement. For you see, the home console version is all but forgotten. It's pretty subpar, some would say rotten. But the handheld version that we'll look at today is a diamond in the rough. A hidden gem, some might say. You of course play as our titular hero, the Grinch, who sets off for Whoville with presents to pinch. And wouldn't you know it, they took inspiration from that Metal Gear Solid game, the PS adaptation. For you see, the Grinch, he's so stealthy, he doesn't need boxes. He's got his dog Max in place of Grey Foxes. You alternate between them depending on level, each with their own abilities and enemies to dishevel. I would even wager it's in the same engine as Kojima's Ghost Babble, so you're in for a grin. If you like tactical espionage action, The Grinch is a game that's perhaps got some traction. The game sees you collecting a number of presents that's displayed on the top right of the screen in the segment that's also reserved for a timer, the portrait and lives that you'll need to keep track of if you wish to survive. A stealth game with a timer is rather unpleasant, but you'll learn to respect it as a constant present, for its tick-tocking down is a constant reminder that the Grinch is not slow, he's a quick sneaky miser. So you move through the shadows like a slippery eel, like a bad banana with a greasy black peel, to rob from the Who's the things they enjoy, their presents, their bells, their reefs and their toys. And once you've stolen those trinkets, you'll let out a snicker. And all the who's on screen will cry out an icker. As the screen shows you scoring, the Grinch grins delighted. The Christmas in Whoville is one step closer to blighted. But at least we forget, this is a game from Konami. So the difficulty here comes on just like a tsunami. With a difficulty curve like the Grinchiest tree. As you'll find out yourself as you play it and see. And it goes higher in fact than the Mount Crumpet Peak. Because despite all his bravado, the Grinch is quite weak. 
On the hose, he's trying to steal Christmas from Frown on the fake Santa Claus who's come into their town. And so they'll cry in alarm as they see him on sight. The children give chase, the adults cower in fright. If they catch our garlic salt hero, you'll have to restart. For the who's don't mess around, they'll pull at your heart. When you do though, you won't lose the presents you found. The same thing can be said for when the timer runs down. Just make sure you've got some more lives left. Otherwise, it's game over and you'll end up bereft. You'll be glad to know there's unlimited chances to replay the level and see how it advances. But just one word of warning, a piece of advice. You should know going in, this game doesn't play nice. Enemies have projectiles, they're quick-footed to boot. So if they don't chase you, they'll most likely shoot. So you'll need quick reactions if you want to survive and learn the controls if you're looking to thrive. Use A to attack while B sees you crouch, pressing A again to make snowballs to pouch. These can be thrown to knock enemies down, or you can just use your horn if you're next to those clowns. The toughest thing about the game is its movement. Konami could have done with some tweaks and improvement, as pressing the D-pad is no guarantee that the Grinch is going to end up where you want him to be. As there's some hidden track on which the player is moving, that's not always obvious and you'll find yourself disapproving of how sticky it feels when you're fleeing those who's, and how many times you'll get caught out by it too. Because once you get spotted, you'll be rather swift, and the game overcompensates, making you drift, as you'll automatically turn upon hitting a wall, which always threw me and caused me to fall. So you'll try, try again as you struggle to clear it, the game making a Grinch out of your gaming spirit. As there were a lot of occasions where I put the game down, as the difficulty spikes you caused me to frown. Forget the game's passwords, they're no help at all. Codes every five levels, which just made me ball. As sometimes it took me so long to progress, and I needed to keep at it in spite of the stress. It can take some time to finish these stages, so don't play it on a bus ride unless it takes ages, or you'll run the risk of not getting a password, and I'll feel no guilt if this fact goes unheard. As the player progresses, they'll mix up the gameplay, and at this I'm afraid I must stress with Invey that the non-Grinch levels are a bit of a chore, as well as frustrating I found them a bore. As Max the player must gather up gifts, but our good papa cannot deliver the biffs, so down with A isn't snowballs, it just sees you bark, and I must say dear viewer, the contrast is stark. While you can jump over the doggos, I don't recommend it. Instead, just bam bark and they won't throw a fit. And you can creep along as long as you woof. The dogs will stay seated. It's a bit of a goof. They'll mix this up later by making you slide around on the ice, and I admit I got snide. Oh, an ice level, I thought, said no one ever. I really enjoy them, how unique and how clever. Honestly, they're not as bad as you'd think, though I do wonder who left their gifts on the rink. But the worst bits of all, dear viewers, I've not begun to describe, so I'll get to it quick, because this bit needs a jibe. There's a go-karting section, yes, in a stealth game, and it feels out of place, aren't there, I say lame. Who in God's name sneaks around on a go-kart? This is one section I wish would depart. You hold B to accelerate or you crawl at a snail's pace, and you'll risk getting caught by the Who's if you do race. The game's janky movement's not suited for driving, but you'll need to go fast if you've any hopes of surviving. But thankfully this section is only five stages, and if you want to skip them before it enrages, I'd say be my guest because there's nothing to see here, except for the ineptness of this broken feature. And if you do skip it, you'll feel better for it, as beyond that part, the game starts to fit. They introduce keycards and labyrinthian levels. They really challenge the player and upon beating Revel. What's more to say, as I think you'll all see, the game's a bit rough, on that we agree. It's got some parts that I find downright awful, some bits in fact that should be considered unlawful. But if you like a game that's going to test you, the good bits of the game are worth looking into. I don't think it'll make your heart grow in size, 
but give it a go and you might be surprised. For what it lacks in polish, it makes up in charm. From the holiday soundtrack to the Grinchy alarm, there's joy to be found here if you look hard enough. Though I do think for some, that search will be tough. But if stealth is your thing and you enjoy a challenge, this game could be worthy of a bargain bin scavenge. For at the time of writing, the game's still quite cheap, so maybe it's one on which to not sleep. But maybe check first if it's not come from Santa. Maybe it's under the tree next to the good Christmas Fanta. But until then, I'll say Merry Christmas, good tidings to all. Just watch out for Grinches or you'll get no gifts at all. So that was the video I hope you've enjoyed and weren't too annoyed with the rhyming deployed. If you've already played it, then say so below, as it's something I'd honestly would like to know. Or you can find me on Twitter and the usual places, as I'd love to be able to put names to faces. But until next week, Game Boys and Girls, I'll bid you adieu, because then I'll be back with a video or two.